Hello again everyone, Ken from Whittling Woods back again with another Whittling Wood Carving tutorial. Today we're going to do a 3 inch figure. The block of wood we're using is 6 inches, we'll just give ourselves a little room to hold it. Um, we're going to do it in, uh, it's a 3 by 1 inch, so it's 1 inch square. The only difference with this figure is rather than doing the head facing forward, what we're going to have his head angled slightly to the, uh, to the figure's right side. So it'll give you an idea of uh, how I go about doing that. Anyway, I'm going to get everything um, set up and I will be right back. Okay, here we are. I'm going to be using this uh, North Bay Forge knife. You can use any type of whittling knife you have, um, but uh, just thought I'd let you know that. Um, what I'm going to do here is mark the bottom of the uh, the chin, and that's about the third mark, so I come down just slightly below that, and I'm going to put that in over here because, again, the head's going to be facing uh, to the right, so we're going to just kind of cut up to that, cut down to that, just to kind of give ourselves uh, a little... Uh, mark there. Then I'm just going to kind of take down these edges just a bit here. You can just go around and take those down. Okay. So there, there you go. What I'm going to do here is just define the boundaries of the head. So that's going to be the bottom of the chin over here. I'm going to come in around here and I'm just going to angle it up slightly, as you can see, back to that, back to that third mark approximately. Maybe just slightly below that. Cut up to it and cut down to it. Some of this video I'll just kind of you know, it's it's a bit repetitive. I'll zoom through sections that are that are just repetitive and boring. So, um, we're just defining the boundaries of the uh, of the head and the body at this point. And then I kind of come down here and I start to get it to the back. This is going to be the back of the head, so that'll be probably at the third mark, right about there. I'm going to put a little mark in there. And I'll just bring these two lines up to that mark. So there you go. You can see this is going to be the front of his face, his nose, and everything else. All right. Now we'll um, just um, let me just clean that up a bit. Okay, we're going to say his feet are going to be right about here. I'm just going to put that reference in in the front. It'll be just easier when we're working with with this. I come up, you know, whatever you want to do, however however big you want his uh, shoes or, or feet or boots or whatever he's got on to be. So there you go. We're just going to put a little mark in there for that. As I mentioned in a number of videos, I kind of like to give myself some defining boundaries and, and marks to work towards. And that's essentially all I'm doing here. I just want to, you know, remind myself that the feet are up front over here. So there you go. I'm going to start uh, kind of rounding the figure out just a bit. Okay, so there you go. There's the front. This is going to be his back. Right in here. We'll define the head here. What I like to do is come about halfway. Um, about halfway down, give or, give or take. So 
um, and that'll be the eye line and top of the nose. So again, this is the, the, the head itself. So we'll come approximately halfway down, uh, maybe, maybe slightly above the halfway mark. And we'll put a little mark in there. Cut up and down to it. We're just defining the, the eye area and the upper part of the nose. I have tons of uh, tutorials that step you through this process. Um, so if you're interested, check some of those out. Interested in, in a little bit more detail than, you know, we, maybe that I'll, I'll cover in this video. Um, so be sure and check that out. And we're going to keep this figure. Again, I'm gearing most of these videos for people who are just getting into the hobby um, and, want to, and want to kind of uh, learn along with me. We're always learning, no matter how long you've been doing this. So there you go. You can see the head kind of angled off to the side over there. It just gives it, you know, adds a little bit of a different dimension to your character. Sometimes it's fun to have uh, the head in a different orientation. And I'm just going to start taking that down a bit. And I'm going to put the nose, uh, we'll say right about here. You know, we won't give them too big of a nose. So I'm going to kind of probably divide the line from where the, you know, the eye line and the bottom of the chin. I'm going to come in here and put the nose approximately right there. We'll get the head kind of, you know, roughed out a bit. And then we'll work on the body. So there you go. You can kind of see how that's looking. All right, not too. Take your time, go go about it uh, methodically, and 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 you'll get the hang of it. Uh, for the nose, the corners or the sides of the nose, we're just going to come in here and put a um, and put a cut right here. And then another cut on this side, right about here. All righty. And then I'm going to come down and just take up that little bit of wood on the side over there. Like so. Same thing on the side. Put a little stop cut at the top and you're going to come, kind of come down and just take that little bit of, little chunk of wood out. And like, again, I'll mention this a few times probably. Um, but um, I, I have other videos that, that go into uh, quite a bit of detail about doing this, so feel free to check those out if, if you feel that uh, maybe I've covered this too, too, this, these parts a little too quickly in this video. So there you go. We just sort of established a little triangle of wood in there that, that'll eventually be his news. I'm going to... Um, Stop up my knife and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, back again here. Um, what we can do now, start uh, considering, uh, we got, you know, the face just bait, kind of roughed out. Um, we're gonna leave a little bit of uh, wood on the sides here because, you know, we'll give them maybe some ears, uh, I guess, on this figure. Um, so, well, there we go. Uh, for the body itself, let's, um, let's start working on that. Let's get an idea of where we're gonna go with this here. Um, what I like to do is come down along the edge here for his pants and his boots. So I'm just going to kind of carry this line down like so. Same thing on this side. This will be the, you know, his, um, his pants and, and boots, shoes, whatever, sneaks, whatever you want to have. I'm going to split this right down the middle here and um, just rounding off his shoe. You know, again, uh, I've mentioned this quite a number of times. I tend to work roughing out the areas and then I go back 
and um, and refine them as the whittle progresses. So, but for the time being, I, I tend to work in that in that way. I don't get to a a uh, you know a, a full. I don't work in a, a, a particular part of the figure to completion and then move on to another area. I don't know if anybody does it that way or not, but um, it's I kind of just generally rough it out a bit and then go back and and, uh, and refine it. But certain key landmarks, the, the feet, the face, the head, you know, things like that, if you have uh, kind of rough outs, um, it just makes it easier when you're you know, when you're proportioning the piece. So there you go. We just gave them kind of little rough out for his shoes over here. Um, what I'd like to do now is I'm going to just kind of round this body out just a bit more. Bring this in over here. Let's, um, let's give him, yeah, let's, we'll get, we'll give him a bit of a belly maybe on this figure here. So we'll bring some of this back in initially. Same thing in the back over here. What I like to do is um, is kind of determine where everything is going to go. So I'm I'm thinking that his his um, his pants line, his his body line is going to be right in right in this general area over here. So I'm going to kind of just mark that because what happens here is we tend to want to, you, I, I tend to like to have this part here where his knees are sl slightly, um, slightly angled outward. So I'm going to just kind of put in some, put in a cut over here just to kind of get to that point. So from his waist to where his, um, where his knees would be, we're going to angle that in a bit. But I'm not going to go too far because we're going to put his hands, we're going to have a couple pockets in, you know, as is kind of the, the case with a lot of these little whittles. We're going to keep his hands in his pocket. So that's about where his knees are going to be, and we'll carry that around essentially to the back as well. So I'm going to put a line in here and carry it right across the back. This is going to be the back of his knees. So from the back of his shoes to his knees, it's going to slope inward like so. So I'm going to kind of come up here. And, and cut the, that stop cut, cut down and you can see we're going to start making an angle in this area over here. Kind of like so. So this is going to be the back of his knees and this will be, we said this is his waistline, so his, his his, you know, his belt line in the back will be in that area approximately. And typically on your body, your, your back tends to uh, curve into that part of your, uh, of your, uh, of your, your lower back, your, excuse me, your, um, this, your spine tends to curve a little bit. So we're going to sort of mimic that a little bit, you know, like so. We're going to, we'll, we'll, we'll get it in a little bit more detail, but you can see kind of how I'm doing it. This would be his legs, his knees, um, his backside over in this area over here. And the uh, same thing, we're going to kind of put a line over here. Oh, I did forget to mention, you can see over here, draw yourself center lines. Go down the, 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 the faces of the wood and before you start, make those, draw the center lines. And it just makes it easier. Um, you, you're always going to have that reference for the centers. Um, to kind of work towards a somewhat there's a, the body itself, although not perfectly symmetrical, obviously is fairly is does have a lot of symmetry to it. So it just kind of makes it easier. Just rounding out the back of his legs over here. That's all that is. So we're just going to cut a little a little groove in there, so to speak, and. Uh, down and just go around. Basically you're just separating the legs. That's all you're doing here. All right. 
again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just kind of roughing these things out a little bit here. We're going to come back and start to refine it. And we're going to do the same thing on the front over here, too. We can start to separate the legs here as well. So I'm going to come in there, cut that, and basically just take out notches of wood on either side. I'm not sure if you can can uh, see. Um, normally, I work at a uh, kind of a workbench, and um, the workbench is like right below. I'm actually sitting on a stool, and uh, down here, this is uh, just the ground. It's actually a little more comfortable to whittle like this for me. It's kind of uncomfortable. I've been meaning to change it around a bit um, when I do these uh, videos. I prefer just to kind of whittle uh, with my arms positioned. I have my knees over here, just positioned on there. I just, I, I feel more comfortable that way. It, um, it's easier for people who do this. Um, uh, if you have your, if you work at a, if you work at a workbench, you're going to be pressing your forearm on that workbench a lot and it can cause, uh, um, you know, issues with, uh, um, tendonitis and stuff like that in your elbow, you know, tennis elbow type of thing. So it's, it's a little more comfortable to whittle like this, I think. But there you go. What we're going to what uh, we're going to do is uh, figure out where his uh, arms are going to be, his pockets. So what I like to do is figure um, this is his belt line. So his pants are going to be right over here. So I just put a little cut in the wood, just like so, and cut down to it because that's going to be where his hands are going to go into his pockets. Don't worry about it being too big at this point because we're going to clean that up and, and whittle it back a bit. It's just easier if you kind of do it like this. So you're going to establish where his where his belt line is going to be. You can kind of see over there. And then we'll do the same thing uh, on this side as well. So we're going to go, essentially go from the belly area to almost where the knee is. So we're going to go for the same thing on this side. Come down here, put a little stop cut and uh, cut down to it because hands are going to be tucking into the pockets. So you want to cut down to that cut. This piece here should be further out than this section over here. And that's it. So his arms are going to basically come down over here. So let's do that. Let's figure his arm coming down. Oh, I don't know, probably to the uh, just about the halfway mark, I think. You know, we'll, we'll put a little stop cut in there and then just cut him, cut it out. Kind of like so, if you can see. So he'll have his hands like kind of tucked in his pocket and his elbows slightly bent. Like that. All right. And you can do the same thing on this side. So we went from about there to here. So I'd say, yeah, same thing. We're going to go, obviously, um, right about here. And then we're going to go right down to that halfway mark, approximately. So put your stop cut in. And just cut right up to that. There you go. I'm just I try to figure out, you know, ways to to make this go a bit easy and not that difficult to do. So there you go. We sort of have you can see the we're defining where his back of his arm, his forearm is going to be. And um, I just find that sometimes this is an easier way to do it. And then we can kind of come up here and you can see as we as we round this out, we're, we're, we're cleaning up where that pocket is. So that's all, we're gonna do that on this side as well. There you go. Now for the front of his forearm, we're gonna go right to that pocket line and just put a little stop cut in there, just like so. And then uh, kind of come around this way, put another little stop cut. And it should follow, the, these two lines should be relatively parallel. You're not going to go as far up on this line, though. Um, so we're going to kind of come in here and just like so. So you can kind of see his, it looks like he's got uh, a hand kind of in a pocket over there. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. So basically, um, you can kind of see how we're going here. We're going to take take the same approach. I'm going to 
come into there and then you, you put your little stop cut in there and then you can kind of come around and just take the wood out to that point so there you go so you kind of have a bit of a an indication of where the arms are and well you know we're gonna this isn't by any stretch of the imagination finished we're gonna we're gonna deepen all of this out and kind of round everything out a bit more so we got a little bit of work to do but that'll kind of give you a little bit of an indication of, of where we're moving with this thing I like to kind of just come out here and start rounding out where his belly is like I said we're gonna give him a bit of a belly here like so and we can kind of round out that edge so there you go you got um, you, we got the start of the arms in there and then we can kind of start coming back in here and taking the chest area back just a bit because that's way too big right now if you look at it from the side we got to take this back he's too blocky at this point unless you're going for that look what I like to do is just put a little where the um, where the elbow would be you know you put a put a little stop cut in there and then uh, cut down kind of to that uh, stop cut over here kind of keep it in the camera as best I can that'll give you some indication of where the words uh, you can kind of see like just like so you want to get the part in there kind of deep that part where his elbow should be should be fairly should be fairly deep and you know we'll probably come back and and deepen that even more but um, there you go so we'll do the same thing on the other side over here we're going to come in here and let me just make sure I got it at the right height maybe a little further up and come in here and put a little stop cut and cut uh, cut up to it like that so again, we're just defining the hands right now. Uh, excuse me, I keep saying hands, the arms. And then uh, we can cover the, we can kind of continue the pants line around over here. So again, this is his, the top of his pants. So let's just bring that right over there on both sides. What I do is, like I said, uh, rough the figure out and then go back and start adding some detail to it. So you can kind of see we're, we're sort of roughed out over here. Now we're going to take the back end like we did in the front here. We can get a little bit more down in here. We're going to start uh, rounding them out a bit. Okay, let's define the bottom here so we know. Typically, I put little saw cuts in here. I actually neglected to do that just so it's easier to separate it, but I kind of forgot to do that this time. Um, Kind of get it, uh, get it to that point over there, and we're 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 good here. So I'm going to just kind of bring this in just a bit more. Start working on rounding out his legs here. So I come around, and this is the point where you maybe start just thinking about you know um, the form of the figure. You know how how big you want it to be. How how uh, you know, um, maybe some particular f f 
quality or not quality good particular feature that you might uh, that you might want um, unless you plan it out completely in advance um, sometimes that's a good thing to do Okay, there you go. Um, we're, we're moving along in terms of roughing out the figure. For his back, uh, his upper back, um, his, um, we're gonna bring that up a little bit. A little bit more, I think. Yeah, because we kind of want this area slightly, you know, if you look at your own back, there's a, the, your upper back um, where your um, uh, just uh, below your neck um, um, is the scapula. I forget the uh, that area, uh, but um, yeah, you kind of want to you kind of want to bring it like that. So you have this bit of a curve in here. You know, again, these are compact figures, so we're we're not completely they're not <laughs> they're not following a, a, a detailed um, a, you know anatomy. Um, so we we have to make we have to make concessions, um, and obviously, uh, but we we still want to keep it looking somewhat anatomically correct. What I'd like to do here is again start bringing back the. Uh, the top over here is a little bit too bulky still up, up top. Unless you want to give him a big barrel chest, you know, you could do that. And, but this figure, I think I'm going to bring it in just a bit more. Bring his shoulders in just a bit. Gonna tuck them underneath the head over here on both sides. You can kind of round them a bit on the top over here. I'm gonna do it on this side as well. It's gonna look a little, um, A little bit. I believe when your when your head is turned, the the, the shoulder that your um, where your chin is towards your chin is actually uh, potentially slightly lower um, than the other shoulder than the than the opposite shoulder. Uh, just by the way, you're just by the nature of uh, the muscles in turning your head and neck. Um, but um, I could be wrong on that. But that's kind of what I believe is the case. Alrighty, we got him. We've got his body pretty good over here. If you get to this point, um, you can, you can, you're 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 pretty good. You got a basic figure down over there. Um, let's. Um, what I like to do sometimes is is I get to a certain point in one area, then I like to. Um, sometimes if I spend a lot of time just in one area, I tend to overdo it, and it's it's better I think to to. Um, to go back and and um, um, go back to an area that you've been whittling. Stop in one area and start moving, working in a different area. So uh, let's let's think about the head here. Well, what what do we want to do? I'm thinking he's going to have like a little knit hat on. Uh, maybe he's bald. We you know we'll. Um, I've done figures with and without hair, some with real long hair. This guy, I think we're going to make him bald, so he's going to have a hat on. For his ears, what I like to do is we're going to come up here to about the 
about where the eyes are. We're going to just define the, the top and bottom of the ear. So this is his eye line. We're going to go right to about your own ears, I believe. Go right up to where the top of your eye is. So that's probably good. I give myself just a little bit more room. Maybe I'll make them a little bigger than they normally would. I'm going to put a stop cut in there. And then again, your, eye, your ears tend to end about where your nose is, give or take. So we're going to put another stop cut in over here. And we're just going to kind of cut the wood up to that stop cut. I know ears can be kind of an odd, you know, thing to whittle and um, if you give them long hair, you don't even have to worry about doing ears or maybe a full hat, but um, we'll, we'll do a little ears on this figure, you know, just because. You're just defining, you're leaving a chunk of wood over there that eventually will be the ear. And, it, you know, they don't have to be overly detailed. This is also kind of thinning out the face a bit as well. So, there you go. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but, um, you yeah, know, so you don't, you don't need to see me do that. And I believe I have to switch batteries in my camera anyway. So I'm just going to... Uh, to find that uh, chunk of wood on the other side as well. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back here. Did the other little ear like that. Um, some some um, some things you can do as you're as you're whittling just to kind of you know uh, stand back and take a look at your piece to make sure everything's coming out well. If you just constantly look at it from from the from the front like this, uh, straight up and down with the head on the top, um, sometimes it, you miss things and and it helps if you turn it upside down every so often and just look at it from that angle. Uh, when you do it that way, art uh, uh, artists, painters uh, use this quite a bit. Um, they'll flip their painting upside down and they'll notice things that they didn't notice initially. Um, you can see even over here, it looks like this ear, I didn't notice it as much flipped the other way, but it looks like this ear is slightly higher than that ear. And for some reason when I had it this way, I, I, I didn't see it. Maybe you did. <laughs> I didn't. So, you know, if you flip it, if you flip your figure up upside down every so often and take a look at it, you don't, because you're not looking at it as a figure anymore, you're just seeing uh, geometric shapes, you tend to notice um, inconsistencies in areas where you need to address. And I definitely think that ear is a little on the high side, so I can kind of do that. Just a little, just a little thing that I do every so often, and it does seem to work. Well, <laughs> you might look at some of my pieces and go, you better start flipping it upside down more often. <laughs> Um, or maybe they're best viewed upside down. <laughs> I don't know. But um, there you go. Let's start uh, kind of rounding out the head at this point. So I'm just going to kind of go around here. And like I said, we're going to give him a little a little knit hat, kind of, so to speak. So I just want to kind of go around here and start rounding out the top of his head. So um, that's all I'm doing. I'm just going to come in here and, and go around. So um, I'll get that uh, taken care of, and I'll be right back. Okay, there you go. Just uh, did a little rounding on his on his head over here. We're going to give him, like I mentioned, a little a little bit of a a knit style. I guess a, whatever you want, some type of cap, whether it's knit or not, uh, doesn't really matter. But some some um, some type of cap over here. So I'm going to kind of come down. We'll start of just to find that. Um, um, actually, you know, before I do that, I'm just thinking here. Let me uh, let me uh, work on the ears. Uh, what I what I like to do for the ears is just kind of come straight. We've we've Kind of, you can see them from the top over here. They're sort of uh, a bit, um, they're just angled outward a little bit over here. And I'm just, I want to kind of clean this up just a little bit more. So um, what I want to do here is just kind of come down along the side. So I'll just kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll come down straight, just put a little stop cut in there, kind of come back and then just uh, take out that wood up to that stop cut. So you're, you're just, you're kind of making the ear sit proud of the head rather than just sloping into it. Same thing on this side. We're just going to put a little cut in here and then um, just uh, take out that wood. Alrighty. So we kind of just blocking out his ears. I 
I don't like going overboard with the ears. Sometimes they come out, uh, I've mentioned this in another video I did, sometimes they get a little too busy looking. Um, so that's kind of all we're doing over here. And then we're going to do the same thing on the back. We're just going to, we're basically just creating a bit of a rectangle of wood over here. So I'm going to kind of come around the back and do the same thing we did. Just another little stop cut and then just take out that wood up to that stop cut. So that's all. Just defining a little a little block of wood that will eventually be an ear. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Again, a little block of wood. So put your stop cut in. Kind of come back around. And just take out the wood up to that. That's it. Now what I like to do is shape the ear a little bit. So I'll come in from the bottom. I'll make it slip down to where the earlobe is. And then um, I usually... Make that slip up like that, and then a little notch out of the top. Kind of like, it's probably difficult to see. These figures are kind of small, so it's a little difficult to see. But again, don't get too hung up on detail here. Try to try to approach these whittles step by step, and don't get overwhelmed with, um, with detail. Um, and, you know, just... just Just gonna play around until you get something you like. So that's it. And then for, for the other side, we're just gonna kind of round out the ear a bit. So round it out on the, basically taking down the, the, the edges. And then I come in here and I kind of just scoop out a little wood. And we got a little bit of an ear there. That's it. You don't even have to do any more than that, really. Yeah, kind of like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, there you go. We got a couple little ears in there. Nothing too, uh, nothing too, too, too. They take a, you know, they're little, um, little. Um, yeah, they're not the most entertaining thing to do. <laughs> ears. I think that's why sometimes I like the figures with uh, with long hair. Um, you know, unless you're doing something really silly with the ears. I did a couple gnomes where they have real big pointy ears. I mean, maybe then it's fun, but, you know, ears can be just um, kind of boring to do, uh, I think. <laughs> but, you know, um, they're still it's kind of cool. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's uh, look, let's kind of take back his forehead just a bit over here. And we're just going to put a, the initial boundaries for the hat. I'm just going to make the hat come right on right uh, uh, on the top of his ears, like so. So I'm going to kind of start that and just kind of work my way around towards the back a little bit. And then that, that'll be the low point of the hat. And then we'll come over from this ear and uh, we'll meet up to that spot. Kind of like so. And then we'll carry that line right up across his forehead and right to the other ear. Kind of like that. So we just gave him, just defining the boundary for for the little hat I'll have on. I mean, you could you could turn this into hair as well if you choose. Um, I don't know, I had in my mind that this when I started that, that this guy was going to have a little knit hat on. My wife does a lot of knitting, so um, this knit hat will not look as nice as hers. In fact, it probably won't even look like a knit hat, <laughs> but um, more like a skull cap, I guess. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, we're just having fun here. Play around, you know, yeah, whatever. Little we'll try these out on it. You know, on a nice, uh, relaxing day. Grab a cup of coffee, uh, your other favorite, whatever other favorite beverage you might have. Um, pull up your, your, your comfortable chair to sit in. Get your whittling knife out. Make sure it's all strapped up, ready to go. Get yourself a nice little piece of wood and just have fun. Really, just just do this for the pure enjoyment of doing it. Whatever, whatever, however it looks, whatever comes out, 
secondary to the process. Just have fun and, and enjoy the uh, enjoy. Sometimes you're going to do whittles and they're going to just you know look kind of not very nice. They're not going to come out too good. You'll do something and it'll, you know you mess it up or they just don't come out very good. I trust me. I have, I have tons and tons of them. Um, you know, um, but uh, every so often you'll get one that'll look really nice and you'll you'll kind of enjoy it. And you know you'll put it on your desk or give it to someone and um, it just they're just fun. You know, and then too, if you if you continue with the hobby and you keep doing it, over time you'll you'll look at pieces that you did when you first started and pieces that you did now, and um, and you'll be pretty um, pretty you know it'll be it'll be it's interesting that the you know you get a little track of the of your history with whittling. I'm just kind of going around here and. I don't know, getting a little bit of um, facets to the hat itself. I kind of want to want it to look a little bit like it's. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of silly looking, I think, but but um, whatever. There you go. I'm trying to keep, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to keep these relatively fun and simple to do, um, you know. And if you're just starting out, you know, don't get discouraged. Um, just, just like I said, have fun doing these. Um, they're, they, they're really, it's a fun little hobby to get into. And um, I think you'll enjoy it. And if you already whittle and you do a lot of whittling, great. Um, Start a YouTube channel, <laughs> like, like I did. Uh, I think, uh, but by the way, I wanted to thank everybody. I think I'm uh, about uh, 6,000 subscribers, uh, which is, you know, which is really, really, uh, I'm really grateful that, uh, that, that so many people have subscribed and, um, and watched the videos. You know, I don't, you know, I get a, maybe a thousand views per video, a thousand to two thousand views per, for, uh, per video, but that's cool. I mean, uh, the more the, I know, there's some some you know bigger channels out there that get a whole heck of a lot, and there's some really really talented whittlers out there. Um, they do some great work. But if I can uh, if I can help people out, that's even better, and it's all worthwhile. You know. So there we go. We kind of got our little little figure going over here and um, we'll give him just kind of sort of start thinking about how we're going to um, what we're going to do with the face here maybe we'll put um, we'll give him a little smile line let's put a smile line right right like here just above the bottom of his nose we'll put a little stop cut in there put another stop cut just take out that little bit of chunk of just that chunk of wood over there, something like that. So there we go. And then maybe this, maybe we'll make this one up just a bit higher. Maybe he's grinning. He's got a smirk. Maybe how how's that? So this one will be up maybe slightly higher. We'll make his mouth curve up. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully I don't mess that up. As you, when you, when you smile, one, you know, your, that smile line on the side where your mouth is up, or if they're, if it's a smile up on both sides, that one's going to be slightly higher uh, than the other one. You can kind of see how I, how I did that there. So what I'll do with the mouth is we'll come across here. We'll make this kind of come up over here. Uh, let me just round this out a little bit more. The chin's kind of protruding a bit too much. On little figures like this, it's difficult sometimes to get this kind of detail in, but we do our best. So I'm just gonna give them a little mouth over here. What I like to do is just, if you can see, start to, the, the, the lower lip, 
as it goes into the chin, this area in here is a little bit, if you can see, that's a little bit indented. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of form the separation of the lips. We'll come up here a little bit higher and we'll just kind of come down and maybe go straight across like so. I don't know if you can see that. And what I do is um, just kind of cut up carefully to that. Again, these are really, really small figures here. You know, one inch by three inch. So you're dealing with little tiny bits of wood. And uh, it may, may help to have a, a smaller knife, but in case you only have one knife, we're, we're doing it with just, one, just this one average size knife. But if you have multiple knives and you have a smaller knife, eh, it might be a good idea to dig it out right now. It makes it just a little bit more, more control. There you go. He's got a little bit of a smile in there. What I like to do sometimes is come in here and deepen the corners of the mouth just a bit. Kind of tuck that in. So I put a little notch in just to deepen that a bit more. You don't have to do it. I just sometimes think it uh, it helps. Again, it doesn't have to be done. And then over here, we'll do the same thing. We'll just kind of come up, put a little stop cut over here, a little another one over here, and we're just there's a tiny little triangle of wood that we're just going to kind of come in here and remove just to deepen that. There you go. You see, he's got, he's got a little bit of character already. You know, we just by adding, adding a little bit of a smirk like that, you know, suddenly he's, he's, at first I was going to make him angry. He was turning his head. He was sitting there on his front porch and he just mowed his grass and some kids were running across and he was kind of getting upset. But now I decided that he's actually watching the kids play outside and he's happy for them that they're actually outside and, and not sitting on their on their phones. He's an old guy, so he remembers the day before before quote unquote smartphones. I don't know about you. And, and, and <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the term smartphone, but um the, the phones that people carry around with him and seem glued to. He remembers the day when that wasn't the case because he's an old guy kind of like me. We remember those days and it was fun. But anyway, there, there you go. I went off a little bit of tangent. He's actually uh, he's actually not upset. He's, he's kind of happy. So there you go. Make up stories when you're doing these. It, it kind of helps and um, you'll... Uh, Brings a little life into your character. There you go, kind of, kind of uh, fun little, fun little guy here. We're almost done here. Uh, well, almost done. Um, I won't. I don't want to, you know, go overboard with these videos. They they tend to be fairly long sometimes, and um, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad. If people uh, like them long and and detailed, or if they prefer short, quick videos. If if you prefer it that way, then you know, just maybe fast forward it, uh, put it on fast speed. You can do that with YouTube. You go down there and you, you, you'll have to turn down the volume. Otherwise you'll hear me talking in, in fast, but speed it up, go, um, you know, put it at two times speed and you'll zoom right through this and you'll kind of, you know, you'll still get to see the whittling process, but you won't hear me blathering on and you won't, uh, you won't, uh, waste, um, an hour of your time. <laughs> But I hope it's not a waste. I hope you're. I hope you you get some enjoyment out of it. Uh, let me know in the comments if they if you watch it for purely for enjoyment or to actually learn something. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of both. Um, there used there was a painter many many years ago. I'm sure most people know the name Bob Ross, who um, a lot of people who never painted a day in their life just enjoyed watching him because it was fun to see him create these little. These little paintings. You may have no interest in painting at all, but you just found them enjoyable. People to this day, he did his stuff in the, uh, I believe, late 70s and through the 
through the 80s and he was on PBS and people would just tune in never wanted to really paint but they enjoyed watching him because it was relaxing and fun and uh, I don't know if that's the same case watching someone whittle it's not maybe as entertaining as seeing a, a, a pretty landscape painting but um, but if it is that's great there you go now what I'm going to do is rather than talking aimlessly here I'm just going to uh, sort of start rounding out the figure a bit more he's still a little bit squared off a bit so we're going to come around here for the arms we're going to start rounding that out since we got most of the the head done uh, for the most part we can start working back on the uh, back on the figure again I'm going to come down here you know we want to take down the edges on our, on the arms the legs the body as much as possible we don't we, we prefer you know unless you're going for a very um, angular piece which is fine too um, go around and start um, and start cleaning it up there's going to be areas where you can where you can um, you know just round out the figure it just you know it, it, I think it for me it looks better but again you know choose whatever method you like I just like to kind of go back and create a little bit of roundness throughout the figure as much as possible there you go so there's his belt line so we're going to kind of carry that around the the front over here too so um, I want to put that over there to kind of square this off or excuse me square it off round it off you know, I am talking about rounding things off and I say square it off but um, there you go so he has like a kind of a belt line over there and um, his shirt is kind of tucked into his pants over here and we'll take his backside down a bit I think it's a might be a little too too big. So that's all. I'm going to, to um, kind of fast forward through some of this because um, that's all I'm doing here. I'm just going around, rounding the piece out, and um, you know we're not we're not really adding anything anything new here. Um, we're just we're just making our our final refining cuts and rounding it out, and that's it. You know. So let me uh, zoom through this so um, we can get through this uh, this little tutorial here. Be right back. Okay, um, there you go, kind of, you know, basically rounded, rounded the, the figure out a bit more. What I like to do here, since his hands are in his pockets, I try to create a bit of a, just somewhat of a, an indication um, that, the, you know, the pants maybe uh, have a little bit of a, a little bit of a bulge there for the fact that his hands are in his pockets. And I just kind of go around and underneath and I slowly whittle that out just a bit kind of right around the side, you know, carrying it right around. So you can kind of see it. It creates the effect that there's something in, you know, he's got his hands in his pockets there. Um, and we'll do the same thing on this side as well. You know, just... That's what I said initially, um, you know, when you, when you rough out these, I kind of rough out the figure and then I kind of go back and I start determining what type of detail I want to put in there. And these, this is subtle stuff, you know, maybe, maybe you wouldn't even notice it, maybe you would, I don't know, but um, I notice it and I like it, so I do it. And you do the same thing. You don't like something, don't do it. Do, do, do these whittles for yourself, first and foremost, do them for yourself, because if you're not doing them for yourself, 
Um, even when I'm filling, when I film these, um, film, geez, I could show you, I'm, I'm older. When I video, excuse me, when I do these videos of this, um, I still like to, even though I'm doing it for the YouTube um, uh, audience out there and all you fine folk who watch these videos, again, much appreciated. I still like to do whittles that I enjoy. Um, every so often I'll do a whittle that, you know, um, maybe it's not something that I particularly um, would be doing, like maybe a, a video on just doing the nose or, or something. But I, but again, I enjoy it because if it's helping other people, then it's enjoyable for me as well. Um, and, um, you know, I might do that specific thing myself uh, when I'm just whittling for, for, you know, for my own purposes. But, um, do you know, when you're doing this, do it just to have fun. You know, even if you're doing it for someone, um, just have fun with it. That's the, like I said, that's the important thing. So we're just rounding out his belly a little bit more. Oh, there you go. He's kind of uh, almost done here. Um, what... Um, Let's see, maybe um, it's kind of a small figure, but maybe we can put a little bit of a, of a nostril in here. Uh, we'll kind of, I usually do that before I make the smile lines, but in this case, I wasn't sure I was going to do it. But the more I'm thinking, looking at it, maybe I will. I'll put a little notch there and just kind of remove a bit of wood right at that smile line. And it just creates, makes the nose look more finished, I think, you know, kind of like that. And we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll come around here, right where that smile line is, and um, put a little bit of a stop cut there. And I just kind of, essentially, you're taking out a little notch of wood. It creates, creates a nostril. You can barely notice it, but it does. And then I like, sometimes I'll come in here and I'll just scoop a little bit of wood out on both sides. And again, go about this carefully and slowly. You're not taking big, chunks of wood out. You're taking little tiny cuts. It just adds a little bit more, I think, detail to it. There you go. Give him a little kind of crazy nose over there. I think it looks kind of, looks kind of fun. Uh, for his eyes, we could leave it like that and you could put a little dot somewhere in there. Um, that's fine too, or you can come in here and you could just put, uh, make it, let's do it real simple. We'll put a little line right, like, let's say right there, and then just kind of cut down to it. We're going to form just the indication that there's, that there's an eye there. Again, since it's such a small piece, we don't want to go, I don't want to go overboard. And then a lot of people, you know, don't like doing eyes and, um, you know, they, they have trouble with them. Um, and I do too, you know, um, take your time though and try to, try to figure out a way that you like to do it. That's simple. Um, cause you don't want to, you don't want to just not whittle because you don't like doing one part of it. Figure out a simple way. I've done, I've done eyes uh in in a couple videos and i i try to keep them in this in these videos pretty straightforward pretty easy to do you know this is looking like it's a lot of it's such it's such a small piece over here but i'm just kind of cutting a little bit of a you know just the kind of an indication that there's that there's a little bit more detail under there i'm not going to go crazy with this i'm not going to you know, shape out an eyeball and all that kind of stuff. Just, just something like that. That's all. You know, it kind of looks like he's got a bit of an eye under there. You know, that's all. I'm not. I'm again. I'm not going. I'm not going to go crazy with it. But um, you do it any way you like. And if it, if you'd rather do it very simple and just maybe, oh, well, you know what? I'll show you in a minute. Let me just finish this on this side, and then we'll, I'll show you on the other side if you want to do this. Because, you know, I get it. Doing eyes, doing little things like that can, you know, does it look does it look that great with it or not? I don't know. You you, you know, when you when you paint it up, it'll it'll probably look a little bit better. 
Um, I tried to, I'm just trying to make this one pretty, pretty, pretty easy here. And then I'll just kind of come down around over here just to deepen that a bit. And again, you know, small figures and a, and a fairly large knife, it may or may not work for you, but that's kind of all I wanted to do. Your other option, like I mentioned, is just to come in here and you can just basically, you, uh, so when you're painting it, you just put a little, you can put a little dot right in here somewhere, you know, and honestly, that might work. You know, maybe you, you press it in a little bit. And there you go. You know, so you choose the way you want. Otherwise, you're going to come in here and, you know, maybe put a little dot in there somewhere with your with your mark. Either way, any way you like to do it. Um, just kind of showing you different ways that uh, you could approach it. You can take it a very simple, um, very simple approach or you can, you know, add slightly more detail or you can go all out and bring out your fine little gouges and, and do a nice, nicely detailed eye. Um, I think of a small figure like this, it's overkill, you know, but, um, you may not. And, um, that's uh, solely up to you, however you like to approach this. So there you go. And it's kind of one version and another version. So, um... You choose what uh, which method you like on a uh, for you know keeping it fairly simple, or making it uh, slightly more involved. Alrighty, um, I'm gonna basically make this, since I did this eye that way. I'm gonna do the same thing on that side. But uh, you know, you, you saw kind of what I did. It's nothing. It's nothing too dramatic. I just kind of cut out a piece of wood on top and just uh, you know um, left a little little tiny one in there to give the indication that there's some kind of an eye in there. All right, I'm going to do it on this side and I'll be right back. Okay, there you go. Got two little eyes in there. Now we can um, maybe separate the brows a little bit. So we're going to put a little little bit of a, uh, a, a cut right in the center of his nose and eyes. We'll put a little cut in there like, like that. And then um, what we can do is just kind of come in here and Again, just move, removing a notch of wood. You know, a lot of whittling, it seems like, is removing these little notches of wood. You know, defining, like I mentioned this once in another video, whittling is all about just defining planes. And uh, you, you, know, you go around and you kind of you, you define some planes in the, in the wood just to create detail. That's, that's all you're really doing. And um, however you approach that, whether you do it with a knife, whether you do it with gouges, you know, whether you do really detailed whittles and carvings, or you do, you know, little kind of simple whittles like this that aren't overly detailed, um, it's up to you. And how you approach it is up to you. Um, so that's that's all we're doing. I gave them a little kind of a little bit of a, an eyebrow over there. Maybe this one will be up slightly higher because his, his, uh, he's grinning up on that side. So that's all. We gave him a little bit of a, ah, you see, he's, he's kind of he's kind of happy. Um, maybe what we'll do is put a little, like, it's, like his hat is folded up on the side over here. So I'm just going to kind of go around and defining, you know, the, the fold in the bottom of his little knit hat over here. And just kind of going around here, making a stop cut, you know. And again, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. And then just going to, we're going to now go around and just cut down to it. Again, defining a plane, you kind of see he's got like a little, little brim on his hat. Or you know, his little knit hat or whatever it is. Um, as you get to this point, like I said, when you start getting to, the, and again, I know it can be maybe tedious to watch someone doing this, but uh, when you get to this point, uh, you start to figure out what kind of detail you want or don't want to have in your carving. And another good thing to do is leave your carving. Um, get it to a certain point and then set it down 
and um, come back to it another day. Sometimes you'll uh, you'll approach it with a, a new perspective, and um, you might um, might add things that you didn't think about before, or might see something in it that eh, you know what that would look good there, or maybe I should do this or whatever. Oh, I need to fix that. You know those kind of things. So there, he went from a uh, a little bit of a. He's got a slightly different hat on now, where it's kind of brimmed up. I kind of like that look better, personally. Looks more like a knit hat. Well, you know, to some extent. And that's it. Um, now, as far as his clothes and everything go, you can, you know, he's got a he's got a sweatshirt on. It's we're doing this here, and it's uh, I don't know where everybody, you know, obviously. The weather is different in areas. Right now, we're in um, early April, first week in April, 2024, and where I live, it's still relatively cool. Um, so um, you could definitely wear a hat today. But the warm weather is coming. We have actually. <laughs> Here's something uh, interesting. Uh, I live in the Northeast, and again, it's April, I believe, April 7th. Um, we had an earthquake here yesterday, April 6th, uh, mid-afternoon, and on Friday. And it was it was pretty interesting. We actually felt it. Uh, my wife and I were, were both home, and uh, we're standing in this room where I am now. And for about 30 seconds, everything started to rumble and uh, shake. And we found out that it was, uh, my wife right away, yeah, she assumed it was an earthquake. And um, she was right. <laughs> Lo and behold, uh, just the uh, epicenter was a few miles north of where we live. And it was, um, it, I think they said it hasn't happened here in 140 years. So um, no, no damage for, as far as I know. It was a min you know, minor, but definitely uh, strong, uh, maybe... Uh, I mean, not like they get out, you know, in other areas, thankfully. God, thank, very much uh, happy to hear that. Uh, but, um, yeah, it was actually a little earthquake here in the Northeast. Imagine that. Um, and again, no damage. Nobody, uh, I, hear, I hear nothing about injuries or anything like that. No buildings. It wasn't that severe, but it was uh, noticeable. And everybody was talking about it. So maybe that's why he's smiling and grinning. We skirted that one. No earthquake damage. But anyway, um, I'm just going to put a little bit of detail here. You know, maybe little creases in his pants. Um, and uh, I won't drag this video out anymore because it's it's getting kind of long. So um, I don't want to I don't want to get everybody too bored. But just so you see, you know. Uh, a little bit of um, a little bit of a crease there in his pants. Just a little, just two little cuts. Kind of looks like where the pants are, you know, coming together. You know, we'll do the same thing on this side. A couple cuts over there, and you know, kind of cut to it. And you think about how your, you know, your pants would crease and fold in, in those areas, and then uh, try and mimic that. Like that, and uh, I think we'll put one pocket in the back over here, right here. We're gonna give him a pocket. I think he's got like I don't know sweatpants on or something. He's got one pocket in the back. You could put two, but I'm just gonna give him one. And um, with that, I think we're pretty close to being done over here. I might, I might um, just emphasize these arms a bit more on the back over here. I think they they kind of got lost a little bit when I started thinning it out. So let's kind of re-emphasize that just a bit more. That's all. We don't have to go too crazy. All right, 
our little old guy here with his knit hat, his sweatpants and sweatshirt on is pretty much done. He's got a little bit of a belly. Maybe we'll take it back just a bit more on the top over here to emphasize the, the roundness of his little punch over there. He eats good, this guy. And that's pretty much it. He's, I would I would call that uh, for the most part comfortably done. <laughs> you know, um, I'll clean it up a little bit. I'm not going to paint it because I think I'm going to do a separate tutorial on paint. I mentioned I was going to do that. I, I know these like non whittling. I, I did one on sketching uh, the figure out last week. And I know they're not that popular, um, but uh, some people have asked me about painting. And I mentioned it in one of my videos before that I, I'm going to do a separate tutorial on painting. And um, maybe that's what I'll do with this one. So I won't paint him up for this particular tutorial here. And, um, but I will come, I will do another, I, I, I think, uh, I'll see. Um, if people want to see a painting tutorial then you know let me know that too because it helps to let me know in that regard if, it, if you think that would be beneficial i could show you the way i do it and maybe the like i mentioned i, I paint slightly differently than a lot of people do um well I, I don't know for sure that i'm the only one that does it this way for sure i'm sure other people do it but i use a bit of a more of a wash than a opaque but I, i'll show you both ways i'll show you um you know what i'm thinking in, in regard with respect to this one maybe we'll do um, you know, his pants very opaque and then the rest of the figure um, the way I normally would, like a wash type of thing, just so you can see it both ways. But um, there you go. We have uh, a little figure here that wasn't all that difficult to do. I think if you take it step by step, you can, you, you know, anybody can, can manage it. Um, they're not all that hard. They're to do. They're, they're fun to do. And um, you can go back and and add a bit more detail to it if you choose. I'm going to just, like I said, I'll clean them up a bit. And when I do, when I when it's all done being cleaned up, I'll I'll real quick come back and uh, and uh, and I'll have it uh, displayed uh, so you can see it. But um, that's that's kind of it for now. I uh, I hope you found that enjoyable and got something out of it. Let me know in the comments if it was helpful. Um, and again, also let me know about the painting if you're interested in seeing a separate tutorial on that. That, that would, uh, you know, if, if there's enough interest in it, then I definitely will do it. But I'm, I'm thinking about doing it anyway. Um, or if you don't want, <laughs> don't want to see it, then let me know that too. If that's just a complete waste of time for most people, then uh, let me know that as well. Because uh, I, I don't, I'd rather do videos that people find useful and, and helpful. So, um, there you go. I think we're pretty pretty far along. Like I said, I'll I'll put him uh, I'll clean him up just a bit more. Um, but for the most part, he's he's pretty much done our, our little guy here. And I, I hope you found that enjoyable. I'll uh, clean him up, show you what it looks like, and uh, that'll be it for this uh, for this week's uh, tutorial. Have a great whittling week. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.